Hey guys, well summer's coming and I've got several trips planned up in the Brecon Beacons this summer so I thought I'd do a quick rundown of the kit I take with me for a one night wild camp up on the hill. Let's start over here with um, the bivvy itself. I've got standard British Army bivvy sheet. Uh, this is the desert camo pattern as you can see I got a bit bored with the old woodland pattern after so many decades of it so I thought I'd go for something a bit more colourful. It is quite heavyweight, doesn't compare with your um, other lightweight tarps but um, for about 20-25 pounds on eBay um, you can't go wrong and I do like it because it is nice and solid and pretty bomb proof. Together with that of course plenty of paracord. If I'm going to be in a more forested type area or soft ground then I've got a couple of bivy poles that I'll take with me as well. Again, reasonably lightweight aluminium poles again off eBay. Um, plenty of lightweight tent pegs as well. These are super light. I can't remember where I got them from but available from most suppliers on eBay. Uh, military surplus, that kind of thing. If I'm going to be in a more rocky area where I can build almost uh, some walls and a little body that I can use the, um, the tarp as a roof for, then I've just got an old tent pole here, telescopic tent pole which I can put together and have a centre pole which gives me a bit of an apex so any rain or condensation runs off. I've also got uh, a cheap little five pound carry more sit mat like this so when I'm outside the bivvy um, sitting or kneeling to do the cooking or whatever I've got something comfortable to kneel on as well that also fits very neatly down uh, the inside of the backpack of my day sack and so provides a little bit of extra padding and it keeps it out of the way underneath all that which I'm sitting on here I've got a two meter by one meter um, it's sort of a, a pertex material but it's waterproof, windproof, medium weight um, I can't remember where I got it from somewhere in the military years ago but um, readily available by the roll by the meter from Pennine Outdoors I think it is but I'll put the web link at the end of this video sleeping system I've got here um, a buffalo bag this is the buffalo outer I've had this for around 25 years together with a lot of my kit again nice and bomb proof what I like about this is it's got armholes in the sides, you can unzip, stick your arms out of it while still wearing the full bag, which is great in adverse conditions. It's also got a two-way centre zip, which I like, um, so you can stick your feet out the bottom and walk around in it. So, um, very practical for that. It is quite bulky, it does come in at about, I think, 1.6, 1.7 kilos, so a little bit heavyweight, but again, to me it's bomb proof, it's great for up on the Brecon Beacons, those types of conditions. Again, had it by years, I swear by it. I've got the inner fibre pile as well um, to make it even warmer in the winter. Um, I don't do a lot of winter hiking at the moment, I prefer the summer season. And um, so that suits me down to the ground. I like my comfort, so I've got a standard NATO British Army roll mat. Whack myself on the chin there. Um, standard roll mat that goes underneath on top of that brand new British Army inflatable kit mat again everything off of eBay I think this was about 20 25 pounds something like that very very light that on top of the roll mat ultimate comfort I also have a nice lightweight this is the Kestrel um, by Highlander bivy bag and uh, I always keep the sleeping bag inside that as well it gives me extra warmth extra protection um, also protects the sleeping bag itself. The sleeping bag and the bivy bag can just very quickly be as one stuffed down inside the pack if you need to, need to make a, a, a pretty quick uh, um, a quick exit if um, you know the weather's adverse in the morning you don't want to spend time rolling things up and uh, packing them neatly just stuff the whole lot straight into the backpack so you can get out of the way. That's the sleeping system. Cooking standard British Army mess tin. In there we've got the Sirocco um, by Go System. Lovely little white lightweight stove with piezo starter on it. 100 gram um, butane propane gas cylinder. Fits nicely into the mess tin. 
stove fits in there as well. Coils round very nicely like that. The windbreak that you get that comes with the Sirocco, again, can also fit very neatly in the bottom of the mess tin. Whole lot locks down in place very neatly. And a Sea to Summit titanium spork fits down on the inside. Everything nice and neat. Sits in the backpack very nicely, thank you. Food-wise, I don't take dehydrated food. Um, although it's lightweight, then you've just got to carry more water. So I prefer the boil-in-the-bag stuff. We've got the Wayfarer usually for about £4.50 from uh, Go Outdoors and various other suppliers. This one, uh, Beyond the Beaten Track, Chili Con Carne. Haven't tried it yet. I might do a food review a bit later on in the year. That coupled with all the usual snacks to be found in standard British Army ration packs or their various civilian derivative. Still got some um, fruit biscuits S here and some biscuits brown and the usual good old British Army dead fly biscuits as well. As well as the various tea bags and uh, assorted accoutrements that go with it. Personal kit, um, personal hygiene, toilet roll of course in a Ziploc bag together with the ubiquitous wet wipes. Other personal kit, contact lenses, um, solution, small mirror and a small toothbrush together with the travel, little travel toothbrush, uh, sorry, toothbrush, toothpaste, tubes. Again, all in a Ziploc bag, nice and lightweight. Water-wise, I used to carry the British Army water bottles, which although not heavy, are bulky and take up space in the pack. Now, bladders. Um, I carry around about four litres of water with me for uh, a one-nighter trip in the Brecon Beacons in the summer. I do like to stay well hydrated and of course as the water depletes it gets lighter and these things just pack down to nothing so you're not um, trying to squeeze everything in in a nice way into the pack. You can just stuff it all in. Standard British Army mug. Moving around the back here, even in the summer of course, um, I was up there last July, it was beautiful the day before but in the evening temperature soon drops down on the hill so it's nice to have a bit of comfort and um, I take with me a lightweight down, this is a mountain equipment 35 uh, down jacket which packs down into nothing into a compression sack, nice and snug in the evening and if you're still a bit chilly uh, you can wear that in the sleeping bag as well and nice to have in the morning. As always, should always be in everybody's pack, especially if they're going somewhere, uh, anywhere in the UK, then a hat, of course, and a pair of gloves as well. You never know when you're going to need them. Moving round to the back. Again, expecting the worst. Gore-Tex jacket and trousers. British Army issue, issued to me, again, about 25 years ago. They are quite heavy. They don't pack down small, but they are solid as a rock. They've done me for a quarter of a century um, in all sorts of conditions. And uh, when the rain comes down and the temperature drops and the clag sets in, putting these on really does make you feel nice and snug and warm and protected against the elements. So a bit of extra weight and bulk, but for me, um, it's worth it. Bit deeper into the bag and light. I've got always my little pet salt um, ticker XP with um, it's got the diffuser on the front there and red as well as white light, obviously for flashing. Uh, very very lightweight, nice bit of kit. For inside the bivy, couple of options. I've got really nice little diamond, uh, black diamond tent lantern. It's a little bit heavier than. Um, I prefer, but um, it really is a nice to have inside the bivy as well, so I'll take that with me on most trips. If you prefer something a little bit lighter, a uh, 6 LED torch here, rubber covered, waterproof, it's got a magnetic base which is pretty useful, especially for the car. Clip here, you can clip it onto the front of your shirt or your jacket and absolutely as bright as anything. Got this from Wilco, I think it was about three or four pounds. They don't seem to do these ones anymore, they have one now that's more double-ended, you've got some LEDs on the front and a standard torch one end, but much lighter than the Black Diamond Lantern, um, that slips out everywhere, great torch. Just so I know where I'm going, I've always got uh, my Land Ranger map with me, the Ordnance Survey ones now laminated, 
matte, you don't need one of those matte cases which you're always fiddling around with. You have to take the map out to refold it to get it on the right side and if it's in poor conditions and it's raining, the map gets wet, everything gets wet and it's just misery all round. Now one laminated map. Inside there I've always got with me just a little personal kit list just to make sure that I've got everything um, ticked off before I go. On the emergency side of things, um, I've always got with me a silver sighting compass. That goes with me, of course, absolutely everywhere. So one of those just in case. It's very, very easy to get lost, even on the Brecon beacons on the main paths. As soon as the cloud comes in and there's just nothing around you but white, then um, you don't know exactly where you are and it can get very disorientating. So a compass. I also carry with me a notebook. It's a waterproof notebook. Uh, a couple of little pencils go with it. Used for noting down your route times, also compass directions as well. Very useful to note down before you set off. So if you do get stuck in the clag, then you've got a back bearing you can come back on. And I've also got in here something that was issued to me many years ago in the military, which are helicopter ground to air signals, so very useful. You can find those as well on the internet. Just Google helicopter ground to air signals. I've also got with me, these sit in the top pouch of my day pack, um, standard British Army first field dressing. I've also got a little immediate first aid pack, usually for those tiresome blisters and hot spots. So um, in there, standard plasters, zinc oxide plaster, a little bit of micropore tape as well, some antiseptic wipes and a number 11 scalpel blade, just designed for cutting open those blisters um, before you get the blister dressing on them. In the emergency side as well, my full-blown emergency pack lives in a side pouch for easy access. In here I've got a neck brace, I've also got a personal survival bag all packed down in a foil pack here. I've also got in there a heliograph. I carry some lifeboat matches in a waterproof container. And I've also got in the bottom here a pen signal flare kit as well and uh, of course some uh, some red snap lights which uh, burn for about sort of seven or eight hours i've always got a couple of those and tucked away in the bottom of there cable ties you can never have enough cable ties guys get loads of them the other thing my main first aid kit probably a little bit bigger than most and um, there's lots of things in here that you wouldn't normally find in a first aid pack. I'm going to do some separate reviews of all these kit items actually on location when I'm up in the Broken Beacons. So um, then I'll take the first aid kit to pieces and you can see exactly what's in it. The other thing I carry with me is what's called a SAM splint and it's a flexible splint for uh, limb fractures. Again, useful bit of kit. Uh, you can probably get these off of eBay somewhere. Again, uh, British Army issue. The last thing I've got here is my knife. I don't carry a six inch Bowie knife or a Grand's Force axe or anything like that for extreme survival or bush craftsmanship. I've just got a Victorinox Swiss Army knife in here. It's the more ergonomically shaped one. I can't remember what it's called. It's just got one main blade on it, which has got a lock. So you've got to release that to undo, to uh, release the blade. And it's also got an absolutely lethal saw on there which cuts through just about anything. Great for cutting boughs off trees, do a bit of whittling in uh, the evening by the, uh, by the camp stove as well. Make yourself a good walking staff. That's on a lanyard, permanently fixed to that, which will go onto my belt. So all of that guys packs down very nicely into Carry More Sabre 45 litre day pack. This one here. And the only modification, I've got two small modifications to this. One is the Perry whistle up here, um, attached with a piece of um, piece of elastic on the um, on the strap here, and that again is permanently um, in place with a, a lanyard. The only other modification to this is on here, two 25 mm webbing straps with, um, with um, clip buckles on there, and the kit mat roll mat fits very nicely onto that there. All that cinches up nice and tight 
and uh, keeps the pack nice and uh, nice and snug, fitted on, on the back there. And on each side, two standard Carrymore Sabre pouches. And in the pouches will set all my immediate kit I need to hand. That's going to be my Gore-Tex waterproofs, it's going to be my first aid kit, my emergency pack, the bivvy, all those things I'm going to need straight away. So the necessities go on the outside and in the top pouch of the pack. The niceties all go on the inside there. And of course, if you're wondering about the um, waterproof stuff sacks that go on the inside, well, you haven't got to spend a fortune. Black dustbin liner is all you need. Costs hardly anything, weighs absolutely nothing. So there we go, guys. So that's a quick rundown of my um, one night a wild camp kit for the Brecon Beacons. So as I say, I'm gonna be doing some individual reviews of the various components that make up my kit when I get out on the Brecon Beacons during the summer. So um, there's gonna be plenty more views of the kit to come, as well as plenty more nicer views of the Brecon Beacons rather than my back garden up here in Wyckeshire. So uh, thanks for watching guys, and until next time up in Brecon, see ya.